Now it's time for On Point, where we speak to experts to delve deeper into the biggest news stories in the spotlight right now. North Korea has conducted four different missile tests in less than three weeks. Now this is an unusually high frequency even for North Korea. The latest two happening last Friday and around this time yesterday. They come after the North criticized Washington's new sanctions over the previous launches before that and warned of a strong reaction. The previous two launches were of what North Korea claimed to be hypersonic missiles. The U.S. has hit out at the latest launches, saying they pose a threat to North Korea's neighbors and the international community. However, North Korea insists the regime's efforts to modernize its military and its regular missile tests are necessary for self-defense. For more on this, we're joined by Professor Ramon Pacheco Pardo, Professor of International Relations at King's College London. Good morning, Professor. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So the situation is nothing new. North Korea is attempting to get Washington's attention, but at the same time, they insist they won't come back to dialogue. So what do you think it would take from the U.S. to get the North back to negotiations? Well, it seems to me that North Korea is trying to improve uh, its capabilities uh, while it can. I think it has a window of opportunity before the South Korean election, before the Beijing Olympics. Uh, and I think that uh, eventually what we will see after uh, the South Korean election, we will see a new president coming with a new strategy towards North Korea. And that could be the time when we see negotiations again between the two Koreas, but also between the U.S. and North Korea. But I don't think that much will really happen uh, before we have the new South Korean president in place because there is no incentive uh, for South Korea now to negotiate with the Moon administration. Now, last week, the Biden administration slapped sanctions on individuals, North Korean individuals, uh, rather than the re regime itself. Um, overtly, North Korea... Uh, put out these angry statements, but you'd imagine that they weren't particularly bothered by these uh, sanctions. Do you think it would have been in the U.S. interest for them to have come out harder, be more decisive and hit the regime itself harder with these new sanctions? That would have been a possibility. It seems to me that the, the main issue that we have is that with North Korea having closed its borders until, until recently, uh, since the COVID-19 pandemic started, it has imposed uh, sanctions on itself, so to speak. So I think that new sanctions from the U.S. are really not going to make uh, much of a difference to the North Korean economy. Clearly, they're not going to make a difference to the development of the North Korean nuclear weapons or, or missile uh, programs, because they have been imposed since 2006 and nothing has changed in this respect. So I think at this point, uh, it is very difficult for the U.S. to target the regime and individuals who have been targeted won't be bothered by it. So it seems to me that the uh, sanctions have really uh, run their course and that the U.S. can keep on imposing new rounds of sanctions, but that won't really change the calculus of North Korea and it won't really hit the economy any harder than it has been hit because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And Professor, um we are just around 50 days away from South Korea's presidential elections. So do you think the election plays uh, a decision-making role for North Korea when it comes to this missile launches? I, I think it does. I think it does in the sense that uh, I, I, I wouldn't mind that North Korea doesn't want um, to conduct uh, any tests uh, while the elections are uh, taking place, that they want to be more quiet during that period of, of, of time. So I think this means that North Korea has to move the tests uh, forward and has, it has been doing over the past uh, few days. And also I would imagine that North Korea uh, is uh, listening carefully to the policies of the two uh, main candidates, uh, Lee Chae Myung, uh, Yoon, Yoon, Yoon Sok Yeol, to, to, to see what type of policy they might be implementing, whether they will continue to, uh, down the path of, of engagement that President Moon has been following since he took office uh, or not. And I guess he will be pleased uh, with the both candidate platforms because at the end of the day, both of them claim that uh, they would be willing to be open to engagement, even if uh, June, for example, might be more willing to impose tougher sanctions on, on, on North Korea, uh, perhaps. 
so I think that North Korea is paying attention, but I think it won't be displeased with uh, the message coming from the two leading candidates who, who as I said, uh, seem to be open to diplomacy with North Korea if conditions are right. Okay, and finally, Professor, a two-pronged question for you. So this coming Thursday, January 20th, marks exactly one year since Joe Biden became the 46th president of the United States. Twelve months on, where do you think U.S.-North Korea relations stand? Are they better, worse, or the same as they were 12 months ago? And as a sub-question to that, would you like to see President Biden himself rather than... Uh, his underlings take a more hands-on approach when dealing with North Korea? To your first question, first question, I think we are on more or less at the same, uh, relations are more or less at the same stage as they were last year. I don't think they have improved, but I don't think they have gone uh, downwards uh, either. Uh, not much progress has been made over the past uh, year. North Korea has improved its uh, missile capabilities, but uh, the relationship uh, with the U.S., hasn't really suffered uh, as a result of this. Uh, and you raise a good point about whether it would make sense for President Biden to take a more proactive approach. Uh, personally, I, I would like this uh, to happen because I think this would solve to, this would help to move uh, relations between the US and North Korea and between the two Koreas uh, forward. But I think this is uh, not going to happen. Clearly, President Biden has other foreign policy priorities. So I think we have to focus on how can relations between the U.S. and North Korea, if not improve, uh, at least uh, see a dialogue process between uh, both of them under the current situation, which is uh, President Biden is not going to take the lead in dealing with the North Korean nuclear issue. I think North Korea understand this uh, by now. I think South Korea, the two leading candidates for the presidential election, probably understand this as well. So I think these are the conditions that we have to uh, work under. All right, Professor, thank you so much for your insights, and we hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.